Law Warrior Aerotech, Triumph Class Dropship. The Triumph Class Dropship is designed to carry a fully equipped armor battalion onto the battlefield. Able to transport up to 45 tanks and their crews, the ship is one of the more common classes of dropships in the successor states. In addition to transporting armored vehicles, its cavernous vehicle bay is also perfect for transporting conventional aircraft, artillery, battle mechs, and aerospace fighters. The Triumph is the largest aerodyne vessel still in existence. Though the shape limits its transit flight characteristics, it does allow the Triumph's armoured vehicles to be loaded and unloaded easily. The ship's large interior is divided into five decks. The bottommost deck houses the ship's transit drives, landing gear and fuel tankage. Running through the centre of this deck is a portion of the ship's vehicle bay, which has room for 15 tanks lined up end to end. Near the aft end are two cargo bays, each capable of holding tons of supplies and equipment. The bays each have enough floor area to fit four light vehicles. The ship's main vehicle bay occupies most of the second deck. At the end of is a ramp that, when lowered, leads down to the bottom deck but blocks any access to the lower vehicle bay. The second deck also houses the ship's forward weapons bay and ammunition storage. The middle deck contains most of the ship's personnel and mess facilities. The med bay, food storage, and personal equipment storage is found here also. The deck's aft section houses the lower half of the ship's engine core. The fourth deck contains the dropship's engineering central center, avionics, computers, communications, electronics, batteries, and the upper half of the forward weapons bay. Also located on this deck is a well-equipped tactical operations center for use in coordinating ground unit movement and combat. The back of the deck is taken up by the upper half of the engine core. The fifth deck houses the bridge, deep space tracking radar, waste processing, equipment storage, ship's laundry, and fire control systems. The back portion of the deck houses the power plant. Located at the far aft end is a rear firing weapons bay that can be accessed only through the engine compartment. The Triumph has three large bays to house personnel of the armor companies. Each one is long and narrow, with 12 double high bunks lining each wall. Between each set of bunks is a large personal gear locker. At one end of the bay is a washroom that the entire company shares. At the opposite end is the main entrance, next to which is a door leading into the CO's room. The unit commander and the first sergeant share this, which contains one double bunk, a fold-down wash basin, and a pair of fold-down tables and benches. The ship's crew is housed in double occupancy quarters located on the deck above the troop deck. The crew also has a separate mess and their own recreation facilities. The transmission then is to land in a pre-established landing zone and then deliver its battalion of tanks. Though the ship wasn't designed to enter contested territory, it's been called upon more than once to deploy reinforcements into the middle of a battle zone. The Triumph is a demoralizing sight to enemy units, though its passengers and cargo are mech warriors and the battle mechs. An armor battalion usually makes up four with its numbers. This is a big ugly spud of a vehicle. It's an aerodyne chassis, 5,600 ton, 129 meters in length, 43 meters in height, and 120.2 meters in width. Crew of 15, cargo complement is 3,260 ton, 45 for heavy vehicles, 8 light vehicles, and 135 troops. It's armed with a PPC, AC-10, two AC-5s, LRM-20, two LRM-15s, another LRM-10, two large lasers, eight medium lasers, with two tons of AC-5 ammo, two tons of AC-10 ammo, and seven tons of LRM ammo. Its drive system is a Delano 1070, and it's first introduced in 2593. It now says the frequency of sighting is rare, despite the write-up saying that it was quite common. So which one is it, Buck? It has a, thr a thrust of three and an overthrust of five, with a structural integrity of 11. Its armor is... 560, 110 of it being on the nose, 100 on the right and left wing, and 170 on the fuselage, and 80 on the engines. Uh, basically, the nose section has the PPC, an AC-10, an LRM-20, and two mediums. The wings each carry AC-5, LRM-15, a large, and two other medium lasers, and the aft has a second LRM-10 and two medium lasers. It says it has a fire factor of four on the nose, three on the wings, and two on the aft, which I think is the locations, how many times it can fire weapons from in those arcs. Basically, uh, so yeah, uh, whereas I believe, oh, which one was it, was it the Condor, I th uh, sorry, the Gazelle was the one that could bring a, a small armour uh, company, obviously this is the thing that brings the whole battalion down on the enemy, which is uh, quite interesting, and it's, um, again, it's another vehicle of, uh, of Battletech that is very rarely seen or heard 
uh, but it's an important part within the actual, you know, the grand scheme of warfare in uh, the inner sphere and the periphery, I would assume. Uh, I assume the periphery would probably get a lot more use out of these, being that they're sort of mech light and vehicle heavy uh, for a lot of their armed forces. So uh, seeing a, a Triumph class is probably, as it says, a demoralizing sight because those things are going to be dropping a lot more misery down on top of you uh, in vehicle form. It's an ugly spud, definitely, but uh, the design makes sense with these huge doors on the sides that would open up and it would roll out the vehicles. It, basically, I, as I get the impression that the vehicles kind of spill forth once it's set up and it just kind of spreads out from there and moves into position while the commanders uh, sit on the vehicle it's, uh, inside the ship itself and uh, guide the, uh, the tanks into the respective operation zones. But, uh, yeah, I don't think this this vehicle has ever been used in any of the digital products. Uh, there are so many out there, it's it's understandable that some of them never really make the cut. But, um, yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. I, I think it's also one of those things, it's one of those vehicles I doubt you could ever really use on the table because it'd be such a large vehicle, a large craft. It would take a good chunk of a board on its own. So this is one of those, um, one of those ships that you would see probably in the Aerotech tabletop, uh, tabletop game. Uh, which is it was one of those one of those products that it was there and it was sold and probably sold very few copies by comparison to what most people were into BattleTech for, which is the big stompy robots. Uh, so it's understandable, but the space combat stuff at the same time does sound quite interesting as well, especially in the era of uh, the Succession Wars where warships were basically done with, and now it was down to fighters and dropships being your main fleets battling it out so you have these smaller craft uh being protected by fighters and stuff and they're trying to burn their way down like fighting through defensive stations and um like turrets that would have been set up in orbit that kind of thing so it would have been some interesting space combat uh, i imagine back then when the early aerotech game and the rules were out and a vehicle like this is quite well armed which makes sense quite well armored uh, for what it was carrying so you could probably imagine that the the really in-depth hardcore players would have been doing entire campaigns where they would have been doing the fleet part where the attacker had to get his ships to the uh, you know to the planet to drop them down that itself would have been this whole uh, set of uh, games that they would have played i imagine there'll be someone out there one of you out there will have done it just admit it you had that friend who just had way too much money on their hands and they bought all the stuff and they got multiples and the minis or it was you it was you who had all the minis, and you can gloat, and you can post your pictures, and go, look at my resplendent fleet from Ral Path and Miniatures, and weep, because we'll, they'll never produce these again. Ha <laughs> ha! It'd be something like that. You lucky bastards. But, uh, yeah, rambled on enough. Triumph Class Dropship. It's fun. Fun for everybody. So, I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.